Happy Christmas, everybody, and a warm welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up, a celebration of what was a fantastic season of bike racing, counting down the top 11 defining moments of 2023. This year in the world of racing, we learned that there were no team orders for SD Works at Strade Bianche, where two of their riders were allowed to fight it out between them. Damy Vollering now tries to come over the top of her teammate. It is going to be throw to the line between the two of them. That was Demi Vollering taking her first win of the season. 16 more would follow at the world's biggest races. We also learned this year at the same race that watching Tom Pidcock descend is mesmerising. Mesmerising for us as viewers, but probably more frustrating for those he left in dust. Uh, two standout moments this season, but I've included them at the top of the show because they didn't make our top 11 defining moments of 2023. At number 11 then, it's Jumbo Visma's domination of the Grand Tours. Uh, the classics turned out to be a bit of a disappointment for Jumbo Visma in 2023. After winning pretty much every semi-classic going, they fell short at all the monuments. But they more than made up for that at the Grand Tours. Primoz Roglic reigned supreme at the Giro d'Italia. Jonas Vingegaard defended his tour title. And then Sepp Kuss completed the triple at the Welter in what was a clean sweep of the podium for that team. It's a feat never before accomplished by a men's team in the same season and firmly marks Jumbo Visma as the stage racing team to beat. They obviously can't better that in 2024, but it'll be interesting to see how close they come to replicating it. Number 10 now, Matej Mohoric's interview at the Tour de France. On what was the fastest stage of this year's race, Mohoric found himself with Kasper Asgrain and Ben O'Connor for company in the final, and duly outsprinted them both to the line. But as impressive as that win was, it was his words afterwards that caught everyone's attention. Sometimes you feel like you don't belong here because you, everyone is so incredibly strong that you, you struggle to hold wheels sometimes. Even today, during the day, I was thinking the whole day, like how is... And you know that the guy who's pulling is suffering just as much as you do, but it's just cruel to then be able to, to follow the decisive attack when Kasper went. I don't know, like he was so incredibly strong. He went into, on the attack yesterday and won the stage. And today to have the will and determination to do it all over again, like you just feel, you just feel that you don't belong here. And then I, I followed him. I knew I have to make everything perfect. And I, I tried my best because I, I not just for myself, also for Gino and for, for the team. And then at the end, you almost feel like you betrayed them because you, you beat them not to do to the line. But yeah, it's just uh, the way professional sport is. Everyone wants to win. And uh, obviously, if I want to win, I need to take the wheel of Kasper and, uh, and then try to beat him on the line the last 50 meters. But yeah, I just feel like so many things right now. Never change, Matteo. At number nine, it's back to the Giro d'Italia and the penultimate stage. Penultimate stage ITTs weren't a fond memory for Primoz Roglic going into it, and history seemed to be repeating itself midway up Monte Lusari. Thomas is going to be slower, but by how much? Jersey open, windows wide open, and oh, no, 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 no! It had to happen again, didn't it? And the nightmare of the mountain time trial, Primoz Roglic gains have just gone up in smoke. However, this nightmare was about to turn into a dream. Roglic had enough left in the tank to not only make up the time he'd lost, but also to leapfrog Geraint Thomas in the general classification and put himself into the pink jersey. And to make it even more special, he'd done it close to the border with Slovenia. He may have been disappointed, but it's what he did the next day that puts Geraint Thomas in at number eight. On the final sprint day in Rome, he took it upon himself to lead out his friend and former teammate Mark Cavendish. It was a gesture we rarely see in modern cycling, and whether or not it was the key to Cavs' victory that day doesn't really matter. He won, they both celebrated, and cycling fans around the world got goosebumps. Number seven came a couple of months later on the road of France. At the second Tour de France fam Avec Zwift, SD Works were on a mission to overhaul Annemiek van Fleurten. It was all still to play for going into the Queen stage of the race, but it most certainly wasn't by the end of it as Vollering sets off to try and claim the yellow jersey and it looks like Van Vluten is starting to crack. That day marked a definitive changing of the guard in women's pro cycling. Demi Vollering is now the woman to beat. At number six, we have Tadej Pogacar doing the treble back in April. A couple of years ago, few would have thought they'd ever witness a Tour de France champion winning the Tour of Flanders. In 2022, Pogacar proved it could be possible and in 2023, he did it. Look at the way he's distancing the quality of riders in his wake. 
It's a wake-up call yet again for absolutely everybody. You just can't fathom the way this man continues to impose himself on the entire world of cycling. He's only gone and won Flanders, for goodness sake. That was the first of three successive big wins. Two weeks later, he was on top of the Amstel Gold Race podium, downing a beer. And three days after that, he triumphed on the Mur de Huy at La Fleche Wallonne. Four days later, though, we had one of the biggest disappointments of the season as he crashed out of Liège-Bastogne-Liège. We never got to see that much-anticipated battle with Rimco Avenepoel. Time for the top five, then. And next up, it's Sepp Kuss winning La Vuelta. Few would have believed that the American could one day win a Grand Tour, probably not even himself. But as part of one of the strongest Grand Tour squads ever assembled, Kuss took advantage of all eyes being on his teammates and sailed up the road on stage six. Even then, not many thought he had a chance at overall victory, but it would soon be dawning on everyone, including his teammates, that it was going to be very hard to take that red jersey off him. And so it proved to be. Kuss managed to hold his competitors and his teammates at bay to become the first American Grand Tour winner in 10 years. Just off the podium then, at number four, it's Alison Jackson's Paris-Roubaix win. Once live coverage started, it emerged that a group of over 20 riders had forged an advantage of over five minutes over the main favourites. As the kilometres ticked by, it became increasingly clear that there was no guarantee of catching them, and nobody knew that more than EF's Alison Jackson. Not only did she do more work than anybody else in the breakaway, she did more to encourage everyone than anyone else. And it worked. The group made it to the famous Roubaix Velodrome well ahead of the main favourites, and Jackson duly outsprinted everyone in her group to take one of the biggest upsets of the entire season. And being Jackson, of course, we were treated to one of the most memorable post-race celebrations of the season as well. Right, it's time to move on to the podium places. In third position, it's the Pino party. It's still hard to believe that we won't be seeing Thibaut Pino racing again next year, but boy did he and his fans make the most of his final year. With those fans out in force on home roads, Pino made the day's breakaway on what was his final Tour de France mountain stage. It may not have been the fairy tale ending that he and we had hoped for, but there wasn't a more fitting way for the Frenchman to bow out, in style and in heartbreak. His final farewell, though, came in Italy, where seemingly all of those fans had made the journey to say goodbye to their hero. So, who is at number two? Well, it's Jonas Vinigor for that emphatic victory on stage 16 at the individual time trial of the Tour de France. Up to that point, the battle between Vinigor and Pogaccia had swung both ways. But in just 22 kilometers, the Dane pretty much put the race out of reach. It wasn't that Pogaccia's performance was bad that day, it's just that Vinigor's was exceptional. Only once in history has a rider put more seconds per kilometre into second place in a Tour de France time trial, that being Onkatil versus Bouvet in 1961. It was a race-defining moment and possibly a career-defining moment for Jonas Vinigor. And so, drum roll please. The most defining moment of the 2023 season was Mathieu van der Poel's World Championship win. Now, when I replied to my tweet a couple of weeks back, so many of you pointed to this as your favourite moment of the year. Off the back of wins at Milano San Remo and Paris-Roubaix, there wasn't much left on the road cycling bucket list for Van der Poel, but one of them was a rainbow jersey. He ticked that one off in true Mathieu van der Poel style, launching an attack so fierce that the world's best riders were made to look like amateurs. And it looked to be all sewn up until a crash. But such was his power on the day, not even that could come between him and the gold medal. So, those were our defining moments of 2024. Did we miss any? Did we get them in the wrong order? You can let us know in the comments section down below. Now, there was one incident that deserves special mention all on its own. Uh, today, I'm going to be raising a glass in memory of Gino Maida, who tragically lost his life in an accident at the Tour de Suisse this year. It was a stark and very unwelcome reminder of just how dangerous this sport that we love can be. Uh, the tributes paid to him by his teammates were especially poignant, not least this one from Pello Bilbao after his stage win at the Tour de France. Uh, I crossed the, the line and I just put out all the anger I had in the inside and uh, remembering the, the reason of this, this victory, you know? A special one for Gino. We all miss you, Gino. Uh, thanks so much for everything you gave to cycling and to the world. Right, I shall leave it there. The last racing news show of 2023. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I'll be back on New Year's Day for another pre-recorded show and I look forward to seeing you all then.